Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. I'm in my classroom again at Rosedale Technical College. Car behind me here, beside me, is the one we're going to be working on. It is a 2010 Mazda 3 with a 2.5 liter engine. This came from an auction, another auction car, and it does not start. Let me grab the repair order and read it to you. Owner says, no start, no crank. Security light blinks, does nothing tried scanning but no info so it's a no communication let's put the scan tool on it and verify that next so I scanned the whole system guess what module is missing in here my engine computer is not here uh, we have a bunch of U codes some can line faults pretty much in all of the systems But what is missing on this list, again, is my engine computer. So you guys that have been following me for a long time know what I'm about to do next, and that is to check the 5-volt reference circuit. Let's see if we have a 5-volt reference, which will tell us if this computer is alive or not. Picking a spot to check the reference can be a little bit tricky. Depends on the car you're working on. Uh, but the throttle position sensor is usually a good bet. Uh, pressure sensors can be done. Thermistors, we can check the 5 volt reference on a thermistor circuit. And in our case, we're going to use the thermistor that's inside of the mass airflow sensor. There is an internal intake air temperature sensor inside of this that when I unplug this mass airflow, we should have on at least one of these five wires one of these five wires I should show a 5 volt ref. My multimeter is already connected to battery ground. Touch on battery positive just to make sure we have voltage 12.9 volts. We had a charger on here so voltage is a little bit high from that. And I'm just running down the line here guys checking for my reference. Not stuffing this T-pin in here. Don't want to spread any terminals. Just doing a very light touch on these pins. There is no 5 volt on any of these. So no 5 volt reference on this is telling me the computer is not alive. It's not active. And it could be from a power feed problem. It could be from a faulty ground. It can also be from a shorted sensor. I have some videos where I show all of these conditions. So make sure you guys look in the description of this for links related videos that you guys can watch at a later time for these other variables. For me, what I'm doing with this car next, checking the fuses that feed my engine computer. See, I already mapped out the diagram for this. These fuses right here are being powered up by a main relay. So main relay powers these fuses. These are the ones we're gonna focus on. So picking this up from there, with my class here at Rosedale Technical College. So special thanks to my students here at the school for letting me film this part with them. So at this point, I think I had you guys, I don't know what you used, if you used an incandescent test lighter. Mm -hmm. You can use whatever kind of test light. The incandescent is gonna be more our friend here for this kind of testing. These fuses are dead. And on the wiring diagram, these fuses are powered by this main relay right here okay so the real quick lesson here is going to be on the main relay how does it operate how does it work and i really wanted to show you without the wiring diagram now some of this stuff will plug in the diagram later but main relay how to test it first thing is let's take a look at what kind of relay it is this is a standard bosch style four pin relay okay a five pin would just have another pin in the middle. And so knowing relay designs is important. Um, the load side would be the ones where they have opposite pins. How, how You have one going this way and then one this way. So this is load side and this is control side. So as a general rule, for any relay, there should be two power feeds. Can you hand me that piece of paper on my desk that I drew? Some of the relays would only have one power feed. Um, other ones would have two. And you see the way I have that drawn, that one side of that 
relay on the control side. So the coil side of that relay goes to the computer both on both designs, but one of them goes to a ground and then the other one goes to a power. You see how I have it drawn? So if this is a power side switched by the computer, we're only going to have one power feed here. Let me check them first and then we'll talk about it. So I have a control side power there and I know that because of pin locations and I have a load side power there. This is load side power, this is control side power. So right away I know this is a ground side switched relay. Just by two simple measurements at the power distribution box, this is ground side switched. Okay? This is load, this is load, um, this is the load feed, this would be the switched load that's gonna feed these fuses. And then this side's control power. This is a controlled ground. What controls I'm just laying that there, I'm not stuffing it in there. What controls the ground on this is the engine computer. It's a switched ground, okay? And again, it's all about knowing your circuit design. If you look at this picture, well, the way I have it drawn with the control wire, we've talked about this, that a coil of wire needs a magnetic field, period. How's it gonna make a magnetic field? It's gonna need a power and it's gonna need a ground. So externally, I have this one, wired as a power so that means the computer grounds it that is our relay design without a wiring diagram I know that because I have power on my control side so the other side needs to have a ground the opposite one has a ground on the control wire all the time and it would be a switched power that is not what we have how do we know that because relay unplugged we're checking all four terminals. Two of them are hot. Unless this relay is already being turned on, it could be, it's possible, it could be um, latched on the computer side already, in which case, this wire should be a ground. In either design, whether I'm checking a constant ground on this relay or a switched ground, I need my test light connected. It's a battery positive now. The fact that my light is not lighting tells me what there is no ground on this circuit okay this circuit test light is now connected to battery positive when I touch a ground this is a painted ground right when I touch a ground my light lights what is this relay missing It is missing a ground where does the ground come from in this case it is the computer that grounds it and then we have questions, why is it not grounding it? This is an ignition fed, as soon as you turn the key on, this is an ignition fed circuit, okay? Second I turn the key on, that relay should be powered up by the computer. The computer receives an ignition power feed from the key, wakes the computer up, and its next job is to do what? Turn this relay on. No other inputs are needed. Now it could be on some of the cars you need an RPM signal, we need to maybe crank it over, which is why earlier I had you doing that. In our case, I'm missing a ground. So we can either, at this point, give this a ground with the relay in and see what happens, or we can go to the computer and check the same wire at the computer, which is what we did. I have this already set up. At my computer, the same wire is right here. What do we notice about the test light? That's the same wire that controls this relay over here. It has a ground. Can you reach in and turn that key off for a second? We'll watch this ground go away. Turn the key back on. So is the computer controlling this relay? It is. But why am I missing? Why am I missing my ground over here? What's our problem? Is it open? We have an open in our circuit between the relay and the computer. That's what's wrong with this car. This car went to auction for this problem. Absolutely ridiculous. This is, this is easy stuff here. All right, so a little makeshift thing I'm doing here. You want to be careful doing stuff like this, but I'm doing it anyway. The dangers would be my jumper that I'm making here. If I had this touch another pin, we could cook the computer driver. We need to be careful using jumper wires on relays but here's what I want to do. This is my control pin, okay? It's ground side switch, so there's really no safety issue here as far as this wire touching a ground. The issue would be 
is if this wire touched battery positive with that driver on, I'm going to cook that driver in the computer. Test light's going back to battery ground. And the way incandescent test lights are is if I touch that, I'm actually giving it a ground. See all my test lights lit kind of dimly, right? That relay is actually being energized by my test light. I'm giving that relay the ground it needs with my test light. So what you could have done, um, can you crank this for me real quick? It's a stick. Do you know how to drive a stick? Yeah, Don't run me over. Yeah. Um, go ahead and, and uh, make sure you're neutral, push the clutch in and crank it. And this is without me jumping anything. This is the way the circuit came into us. No crank, nothing? Okay, so it doesn't crank, it doesn't do anything. So let's say we didn't know where the wire went to the computer and you didn't do the homework we had already already done and we ha didn't have a pin already in there ready to go you could confirm the open circuit by giving this a ground be the computer that's what the computer does and that's what i'm doing with my test light test light to ground you should be able to start this car and i'll go ahead and see if it starts <laughs> all right shut it off and then with my test light off of there, go ahead and try to start it. Okay, one last thing we can do just to show it. I'm going to attach my jumper to my pin at the computer. Go ahead. Take this away, car stalls. Just leave the key on for me. Our um, fuses that were dead that you guys were testing before. Notice test lights lit down the line on these fuses. Okay, if I take my wire away, watch. Am I am I um, okay to just ground this wire? without my test light. Some of, you, some of you might be thinking, why the test light? Why, why am I using a test light to ground it? Remember what I said. If I connect this right now to battery positive, I will cook my computer driver for this relay and this car will never run. Okay? The reason I use a test light is sometimes you might forget what polarity you're on. If you take a test light to this circuit, to battery positive, you're okay because the light acts as the buffer, as the load in the circuit. It would be no different than me taking the test that I did earlier over here at the computer and switching my test light to battery positive. What am I doing? I am sending voltage through my test light and into the computer, it'd be no different. My test light's not a jumper wire. So right now, I'm confirming my computer's able to ground this circuit. Right now, my test light is being grounded. I'm confirming that with test light to battery positive. I wouldn't want to take a jumper wire from battery positive and do that test unless you wanted to look for smoke because that's what would happen, okay? Uh, you may not see it, it's such a small driver, but the test light is a safety, guys, in case I'm like, not paying attention, had a rough day, and I'm like, this relay needs a power, not a ground. And I'm not thinking straight. So what's the test light do for me? It is my buffer that nothing happens, right? Nothing happens because what does this relay need? It needs a ground. What am I giving it? I'm giving it a power through my test light. I'm doing it wrong. If this was a jumper wire, we would have a problem. Okay? And we wouldn't in this particular scenario right now, because, and the only thing that would protect me is the wiring is open here. But if this wire was not open and intact, if I'm taking 12 volts to this, I'm taking 12 volts directly to that computer pin. Bad idea. Incandescent test light, this is why you want an incandescent test light in your arsenal of tools. Your LED test light will not energize a relay. I know that my incandescent will. It's even glowing. And the brightness of that light is going to be dependent on the resistance of the bulb and the coil of the circuit that you're trying to test. It's a combination of the two.
needs a ground. I'm giving it a ground. We have an open between here and here. My computer's fine. Relay's fine. Wiring is fine, except for the control side ground of this circuit is open. Any questions? That's all this car needed. And, and that could be done. Now, granted, we did use a diagram and we got a little bit more involved, but once you understand relay designs, you can get through a lot without diagrams. One last piece I think I'll show you with this on here and me having the computer powered, circuitry powered up, five volt reference. 5 volt reference is a great guide. Is the computer alive or not? Check your reference circuit. We just got done talking about chapter nine, right? The 5 volt reference circuit, how to use it. Turn my meter on. I should have a reference on this now. And again, this is, um, this is a thermistor circuit. So I wanna unplug it. I don't wanna back probe a thermistor because back probing a thermistor will not give you five. And this has, in this mass airflow, it has an internal intake air temp sensor, which is a thermistor. If I run down the line now, I, one of these pins should give me five volts. There it is right there. The five volt ref tells me my computer's alive, right? Using that as a guide, take this ground away. No reference. Okay, so our open is somewhere between my computer pin, which is this guy right here, this yellow wire right here, and then the yellow wire that comes up here to the distribution box. That harness runs this way, comes into this plug right here. And there's another thing that, what, uh, another area that you guys missed that I didn't show you and that I did with my students is that I'm good from here out. So let's do the same check at this pin. This is the, the yellow circuit that goes to my computer in that location. So remember, this is a ground side switched circuit. So what I wanna do for this test, just to check that same circuit at the computer, is I want my test light to battery positive. When I find a ground, and this test light's gonna light, Okay, and so this circuit right here is that circuit that the computer is controlling. It's good from that location. Hey, while you're here, shut that key off for me. Let me turn this key off. I'll show you guys, we'll lose power here. Good, turn the key back on. Okay, it's weird clicking in the dash, probably related to this. But the point is, guys, my harness is good from here at the box out to here. So that means my problem is in the box itself. There is some evidence, when I pull this relay out, there is some evidence of green corrosion on this yellow terminal, the yellow wire terminal, the control side. Let me show you that. So it is the pin to the left. You can see green corrosion right there at that terminal. I need to pull this box. See what it looks like inside. Broken wire right there. Green and crusty. Broken off. Well, this one was a little bit difficult to set up, guys. And uh, I'm just kind of trying to salvage what I did. Well, first of all, how do you like my setup here? I've got my, my book. Which way, which way is that? That way. Got my book conveniently beside me there. <laughs> got my pen shirt on go pens play tonight uh, but this one was difficult because I had my class uh, with me for parts of it I introduced it the class wasn't there and then in the middle of it my class was there and then at the end of it they were gone again and then I had them actually helping me uh, pull the box apart and find the wire and so I didn't get everything that I wanted to in sequence and I've been holding on to this video for probably about five or six months. So the final piece, again, as I'm talking, will show the broken pin in the relay box, 
terminal. I pulled that out, and then you saw the broken wire part. Uh, corrosion was the was the issue, and um, yeah, I mean, pretty straightforward stuff. Troubleshooting. Can't believe that car went to auction for that. And um, really, what we were doing was fundamentals. It's what I teach at my class at Rosedale Technical College. Um, the chapters that we covered are, are stuff that I've written. It's in my book. <laughs> this side, this side, yeah, right there. Uh, chapter three, which is power and ground side switching. It's titled Output Solenoids and Transistor Drivers. This isn't really a solenoid, but the, all the principles apply. We also applied some of my chapter six material, which was thermistors and knowing how to check a five volt reference circuit and uh, knowing the importance of unplugging a thermistor when you're verifying that. And then another chapter that we covered was chapter nine, a big one, our five volt reference circuit and how to use that as a guide, whether or not you hear me say this a lot, whether or not the computer's alive. Uh, great, great foundational information. Some of you, maybe this video is a little bit quick. I wanna remind you guys that this material is available on my website. You can follow what I'm doing there. You can also join Scanner Danner Premium, which is really inviting you into my classroom at Rosedale Tech. You can take my class remotely. What would be really cool is if you guys come to the school, sign up for our program, I can be your teacher. That would be awesome to meet you in person. So Rosedale Technical College is where we're at. I'd love to have you guys in class. Um, again, I appreciate your time. Sorry for the shameless plugs here at the end. Uh, plug in the penguins, wearing my old man reader glasses, my book next to me, backwards next to me. <laughs> Shameless. But you guys, I have to thank for the success of this channel and for helping me make this possible. I can't thank you enough. I'll see you guys next time.